Yo guys, what's up? It's the Geeky Gangster here coming at you guys today with another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the best starter cars for Need for Speed Heat. Now there are 127 cars in Need for Speed in total. However, most of those are going to be on the luxury end of things and not ideal for your first car. Uh, as races start to get a bit tougher and you really want to upgrade, uh, you're going to be wanting to look at a uh, basically under level 15 car, uh, roughly 50 to $100,000 is ideal. That way you, give, you get a big boost from your free car that they give you right off the bat. For mine, I took the um, Ford Mustang. I don't know what your starter car is. But while it's a pretty good for a free starter car, it's not going to be the best car. And buying a starter car will give you a huge boost. And say races like your 20th race to maybe like 150, 200, it's winnable. And so that's why you're going to go ahead and want to get this major upgrade. Plus you get money pretty easily. So this is going to be better than buying parts for your car. It's just going to be better to buy a cheaper car overall. And like I said, from the $50,000 range to $100,000 range, you don't want your first car being any less than that because the cheaper cars aren't good enough of, of an upgrade to make it worth the, you know, up to $50,000. But the first car I actually wanted to mention here was the Nissan Heritage coming in at $53,500. This has 331 horsepower with a top speed of 175 miles per hour, an acceleration of 2.3, and a nitro of 2.0. Um, keep in, like, uh, just go ahead and try to remember the acceleration and the nitro scores. It's basically ranked on a scale of 10, but the cheaper cars are all going to be around 2 to 3, so acceleration and nitrous doesn't really matter. Acceleration matters when it gets really high. It, obviously, you guys know what acceleration is. You don't want a really low acceleration or a really high acceleration, but most of the, most of the cars will have an acceleration of around 2.2 to 2.8. So just keep that in mind. Next, I wanted to bring up the BMW M3 for $70,000. Now this has a horsepower of 338 with a top speed of 176, acceleration 2.3. Uh, so the exact same as the Nissan for the acceleration and the Nitro as well 2.0. So $70,000 and you're getting 338 horsepower and a top speed of 176 miles per hour. So they're just a little bit above the Nissan, but that comes at a $17,000 uh, price change for just seven more horsepower and one more mile per hour at the top speed off the bat. Um, so that basically that makes the BMW M3 not a good car compared to the Nissan Heritage. So go ahead and take BMW 3 off of your list. That's a pretty popular car. The Dodge Challenger, $72,000, 470 horsepower, 179 miles per hour at the top speed. But here's what really makes a difference. Keep in mind, like I said, most accelerations are going to be 2.2 to 2.8 at this price range. The Dodge Challenger offers you a 3.0, so it's obviously a lot better than a 2.2 or 2.3 in the aspect of, you know, the 1 to 10 ratio, and with most of them being around the 2.3, uh, but the Dodge Challenger has an acceleration of a 3.0, so obviously it's going to accelerate a lot faster when you need to accelerate your vehicle. So the Dodge Challenger is a really good muscle car to get at 70 two thousand dollars that is again you know a nineteen thousand dollar difference the main difference you are getting though is that it does have a 140 difference in horsepower so it's an extreme amount of horsepower in the dodge challenger and it's just a beautiful muscle car at that and the nissan heritage is also a really decent looking car of course you can customize the colors and everything but just the bodies of them are pretty nice now we got to talk about the Lotus. Um, while this car looks nice and it is eye candy to the average person, it's super foreign 
super sporty. Um, but here's the thing that the stats on the Lotus are not good at all. Coming in at $74,000, so 2000 more than the Dodge Challenger, it only offers you 218 horsepower, only can hit 148 miles per hour, and still has an acceleration of 3.0, but with no horsepower and a very small top speed, at least without putting any uh, extra customizations on it with the engine and everything, you're not really looking at that good of a racing car for the, for the Lotus. Now, the Lotus is a good car to come back to later on in your career when you have more cars and you have more money. It is a nice little ride-around car, but it's just not going to be winning you races that you really need to win. And it, it doesn't offer you the reason of why you're upgrading in the first place, which is to win uh, races easier. To build more money and to build more reputation, the Lotus is not your winning vehicle. It's a pretty vehicle. It's a beautiful vehicle. It's probably one of the best looking vehicles in the game, in my opinion. However, it is not a winning vehicle. Next, I want to talk about the BMW 74 M4 Di. Now, this comes in at $108,500. With 335 horsepower, 175 miles per hour, acceleration 2.6, and nitro 2.0. Now this is another pretty sporty car. So what cars out of these do I highly recommend? Personally, I bought the Dodge Challenger for $72,000 because I really enjoy muscle cars and it does have that 179 mile per hour top speed one of the highest top speeds on the list and with you know better customization better parts in your car that obviously climbs as well but 470 horsepower you just really can't beat that for the $72,000 price range it's a great price but if you're looking for something more sporty the Nissan Heritage is also a really good car if you're looking for that sports foreign vehicle. The Nissan Heritage is going to be your nice little, well, you know, it's not foreign, but your nice little sporty whip, as, you know, the cool people say. But yeah, I personally bought the Dodge Challenger for a high, high horsepower, and I personally just love muscle cars. So that's what I would recommend. But if you're looking for a sports car, I would recommend the Nissan Heritage. And like I said, stay away from the Lotus. The Lotus is the one car that you do not want to buy as your starter car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button, uh, subscribe, and comment down below for, for, for future suggestions, uh, comments on this, uh, you know, questions about this video. Anything else, just leave a comment. I'll make sure to get to it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.